how does winning the Index and Censorship Award make you feel? And what do you think um, uh, outside influence, how do you think outside influence, outside rewards, raising the profile of people in countries which are often difficult to, to work in, what impact do you think that has? Um, well, that's that's a tough question. Um, winning an award from Index on Censorship. I mean, we've seen the the former awards, the, the former winners like WikiLeaks and the kind of profile they gained from uh, winning that award as well. Uh, we've been nominated, me personally, as advocacy director for Global Voices uh, Online. We've been nominated for Index on Censorship Award together um, with um, Siphon. Uh, I think two years ago, and then Siphon got it, and they got a lot of attention, and we've noticed then that by winning this kind of award, at least a lot of media who didn't know about the kind of work you're doing before, they will cover that, they will mm, mm, bring your voices to, to, to niches of audience that didn't know about the work you've been doing before, so it is important as someone who is working in this field to be recognized by um, established institution like Index on Censorship. And, and this is not just for the fame or just for the, the, the publicity, but it, it is a recognition of the work that is being done most of the time, but by anonymous uh, activists, like the case of Tunilix, which is done mainly by uh, a, a loose network of activists who have been disseminating, translating uh, an, an information about the U.S. cables coming from the U.S. Embassy in Tunisia. So it is important uh, media-wise and it is important from building and, and building a profile for an initiative which is citizen and, and, and organic grown. And we look across the Middle East, we look at the change that's happening protest, revolution, and then we look at the role of technology. Mm -hmm. How important a factor of the tech, you know, is the internet, are new developments in the last five, ten years, so cell phones, the internet, yeah. how important is that in what's happening in the Middle East now? Yeah. I think we cannot imagine a revolution in Tunisia or in Egypt without the help of social media or the new information technology. It is impossible to achieve uh, this kind of results that we've already achieved in Tunisia and in Egypt without the help of social media and without the help of the new information technology. It doesn't mean that the main actor of change is the information technology. It is people who are on the ground taking risk, who are involved in direct action, who are taking risks. Few of them have been killed. A lot have been harassed, arrested, threatened during decades. And the second remark, this revolution, at least if I'm talking about the case of Tunisia and Egypt, it's not a result of a month or two months of work. It's a result of decades of work done by human rights activists, done by digital activists, done by on-the-ground activists, loose network of people who are working to disseminate information, to raise awareness about the topics that are sensitive to the public opinion, to shape public uh, opinion and to make it sensitive to move towards a change. Now, we've heard a lot about the hype of Twitter revolution, Facebook revolution, WikiLeaks revolution, all the kind of notions that theorists and people, uh, some call them like techno enthusiasts, have been coining notions and concepts like Twitter or, or uh, WikiLeaks revolution. Uh, uh, I think there is a combination of, of of, of actors in the ecosystem that are um, that you cannot disconnect them from each other. There are people on the ground who are taking pictures, images, photos, videos, and publishing that on social media website. You have people who are aggregating, checking the facts, translating, uh, building bridge between those citizen media activists and the traditional media activists. And then you have the third node and hub, which is the mainstream media who has much more impact and influence like Al Jazeera, let's say for the Arab world, which has a big audience, which has a kind of authority uh, by airing some videos that are originally coming from user generated content nature, airing that back to the audience will create a cycle of 
uh, awareness and, and convincing more people to join the action, and which we've seen in the case of Tunisia first, thanks to the internet and thanks to Al Jazeera. And then we've seen that too in Egypt, despite the fact that the Egyptian government has blocked the internet. So it is, the internet was blocked if in few days in Egypt, but that doesn't prevent, that didn't prevent people to join the protests and, 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 and join the action on the street. So it was kind of proof that the internet is not the key role, it's not the key actor, it is one factor that you cannot achieve the, 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 the goals of the revolution without it, but you can manage to, to, to deal with the situation without it. It is a key actor, but it's not like, I don't know, it's complicated. It, it, is, it is a mix of actor, actor, you have people on the ground, you have people using digital tools, and you have the traditional media who are broadcasting the information back, creating a cycle of, of, of information that reaches what politicians call the information cascade, in, in, which is the point that you convince more people to join the action. And without the information, you cannot convince people to join the action. So you need the information. And the publisher, the broadcaster, and the carrier of the information are two kinds. The social media and the traditional media, mainly TV channels, and mainly, in this case, of Tunisia and Egypt, Al Jazeera. One final question. The state, <coughs> governments, bureaucrats in offices, secret services, play a cat and mouse game with individual activists, with organizations such as yours, um, with uh, the developers of new technologies, open source. And it's a cat and mouse game between individuals mm -hmm. and civil society and the state. Who do you think will win the game? Um, uh, activists are already winning the game. They, they, they gain it a lot of points. Uh, in the case of, of not only in Egypt and Tunisia where revolution have been the result and of, of this kind of activism, but in, in other places where governments are engaged in internet filtering and censorship and monitoring, uh, we've seen activists tasting, exercising, practicing um, the, uh, the freedom of expression and you cannot take that from them anymore. I mean, if he, uh, 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 the youth movement who, who, who is composed of a loose network of people who are not activists, most of the time people join Facebook or join YouTube just for fun. They want to connect with, with their friends and family uh, and from time to time they publish some decent information, some, some critical information about the government. But most of the time the, the, the big amount of people who are there online on those social platforms are composed of people who do not care about politics. But when you start blocking websites that are used by average internet users, let's say Facebook or YouTube or Flickr or, or Twitter, uh, you will create, when you block them, you will prevent average internet user from accessing funny videos, cool pictures, uh, to connect with their family. And you will transform a tiny percentage of them into political activists because they will protest this kind of censorship. This is what happened in Tunisia. Egypt wasn't engaged in any kind of censorship and internet filtering. Um, unless, I, I mean, um, till the last events in, during the, 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 the revolution in Egypt, in Egypt, they experienced it with internet censorship, they blocked all kind of, of internet access. But before that, Egypt wasn't engaged at all in any kind of online censorship. And this is what we call, what, what a friend of mine called, Ethan Zuckerman, uh, described it or called it with the cute cats theory. If you prevent people from accessing YouTube to watch cute cat videos, you will, you will make uh, a few of them political activists who will first protest the online censorship and then will become maybe political activists. And this case happened in Tunisia, in China, in, in Iran, in other places. So who is winning the game? I think activists are winning the game. The government are learning from each other. They are implementing new tactics and new tools. They are monitoring the internet. They can get you if you are an activist using uh, this kind of tools without 
preventing yourself from, from being exposed online, from exposing your identity, your IP address, your location, if you are using any kind of geolocation data by using Twitter or any kind of other mobile uh, 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 geo where tool, then you should be uh, very careful about it. If you are living under a uh, repression regime, you should use the tools that protect your identity and use TOR. Thank you very much. And you're welcome. Thank you. Brilliant.